Hi there. This is a tutorial by request of a gentleman that asked me how I would go about making a design like this that would be intended for a plasma CNC. So this would be something that would be cut out of metal. So an important thing to remember about that is you have to really be careful with your negative space to make sure that things don't fall out uh, when they become unattached uh, from the rest of the design when you cut them out. So let's get started. I'm going to slide over to a new area of the canvas and First things first, I will create a couple circles. So I will use the circle tool, uh, click and drag out holding control to create a, pro a proportional or a constrained circle. And this already has a stroke applied to it. If yours looks differently, say it has a fill and no stroke, all you need to do is hold down shift and click on this black swatch here that will give you a black stroke. And if you hit the X, that will remove the fill. So now I have <clears throat> one circle and what I'd like to do is just simply duplicate that. So I'll press control D on the keyboard. I'll press spacebar to get back to my select tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to resize this, but first of all, I'll resize it first, just so you can see what happens if you just use the default setting. See it resized it, but it changed the width of the stroke. And that's this little setting right up here. If you uncheck that, so let me just hit control Z. If I uncheck that before I resize, now it will keep the stroke the same size as the other one as I originally intended. So that looks good to me. Let's work on adding the text to it. So I'm going to press T on the keyboard to bring up my type tool or my text tool and I'll start typing. I'm just using the name Mills for whatever reason. And I was using a font called Saddlebags or Saddlebag. So with that done, I've changed that font to Saddlebags. You can't see it because it's the font size is really small. So I'll just use my select tool and I'll drag that out a little bit larger. Now I'm just roughly gauging the height of this to fit into here. That looks okay to me. So let's uh, add the established 1982 line at the bottom. So with my text selected, I'll hit control D to duplicate that. I'll drag it down. I use my type tool uh, and control A to edit that. And I will just type established 1982 and I'll hit escape to get out of that. Uh, I hit escape again to go back to my select tool. So now I have all of the text that I need. Uh, one thing that you might need to do is if your font is really close together, you might want to change the spacing between the letters or between the characters up here. So let's see what happens with that. If I make that 50, that actually probably looks pretty good. And let's change this to, uh, let's make that 50 as well. And you know what, that one, the numbers are quite far apart. I'm actually going to reduce that a little bit. Let's go down to 20 and see how that looks. So I'll use a select, go back to the select tool. Now what we want to do is we want to take this text and we want to put it on the path. So I'm going to put this text here on the inner path. So it will wrap around in between the two circles. So using shift click to select uh, the circle as well as the text, I'll then go up to text and I'll say put on path. And there we are. The text always starts from the starting uh, node of the circle, which is generally over here on the right hand side. So we need to do, so we need to rotate the circle. So I'll click it twice to bring up the rotation handles and then I'll just drag that around until it looks appropriate. Um, there's no way to make this perfect. So what I like to do is drag a guide down from the ruler and then zoom in a little bit and just sort of eyeball that. And I'll move the guide down a little bit lower and I need to rotate that just a, a hair more. Something like that will work. So I'll just click off of that. And now let's work on adding this established 1982. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the outer circle. So shift click again to select both the circle and the text up to the text menu, put on path. And there we are just like the mills it starts over here, but you might notice that this text is on the outside. We actually want it to start over here on the insides. What you have to do with that is select just the circle, use one of the uh, flip selected objects, either vertically or horizontal, it doesn't really matter. And so now what it's done is flipped it and put it on the inside. So I'll click on the circle again to bring up the rotation handles, click and drag around again until we have something that looks like it's straight. I'll drag down from the top, create another guide, and I need to rotate just a little bit more. So you could spend a lot of time zooming in and being about as precise as you can be with this. Um, that's up to you how close you need that. Now, I don't like having these guides here um, what, um, when I'm not needing them. So I'm going to use, uh, sorry, shift and the pipe character on the keyboard 
or the, um, I guess, I don't know if that's, I never know if it's a backslash or the forward slash, but it's the key that's above enter. So shift and that key will hide the guides for you. Now what I want to do is I want to close these gaps up. So this is touching the top and the bottom to really make that, uh, those letters stay well in the design, not worry about falling out or being loose and also connecting these two elements together. So what I'll do is I will, I think in this case, I'm just going to resize this inner circle. So I'll click it once and then hold down shift and control to resize it proportionally and from its uh, middle point or rotation point. And now I have to do, um, because the start of the text stays in the same spot, I have to go back and I have to rotate this again. So I'll, again, I'll hit shift and that pipe or backslash character, bring up my guides. Uh, I'll click on the circle again and I will just rotate that. So it looks uh, fairly proportional. Fairly proportional, or accurate. So there we go. We have the text, and we just need uh, the middle text, the big initial. And this this font right here, this could actually be moved up a smidgen. So you can just select on it, or click on it to select it, and use the the up key uh, on your keyboard to nudge it up a little bit. That'll work. Another way you could do it is you could use a type tool, go into there, select everything, and then use Alt and the up arrow key. And that moves things in. It also moves the characters closer together. So depending on exactly what you want to do, there's a couple options there for you. So let's just create this large M. So again, back to the type tool, I'm going to type a capital M. You go back to my select tool. I'm just going to drag that out to resize it. Uh, again, back to my type tool, and I'm going to select uh, sort of saddlebag as the font. And I'll move that over. And now I want to line this in the middle of the circle. So I'll just shift click the inner circle. And I'm going to hit control shift A on the keyboard to bring up the align and distribute dialog box. And I'll use the align vertically uh, there and align horizontally there. And now I'm in centered the M to the circle. And it's actually a pretty good size already. I think I'll make it just a little bit bigger. Again, holding uh, control and shift while I drag that out. So I'll make it large enough just so that the edge of the M doesn't interfere with the inner part of the circle here. Let's close that, get that out of the way and hide those guides. So there we have the design. You might think we're done, but we're not quite done yet. If you were to try to export this to another program, you're probably gonna encounter some errors. And that's because uh, right now, this text is a text object. If I click on that, you can see down in the status bar that it says text. Uh, so all of the text is still text, which can be confusing to other programs. Uh, as well as these paths right now uh, are, are just strokes on a path. So this doesn't actually have any width or any sort of filled area in another program. It's just, I'm, I'm going to go into the change the view mode uh, under view, display mode, and then outline. And you can see what it looks like. So because the text is solid, that gives you a visual indication that it's still text. And you can see that these paths are just a single path. So what we need to do is we need to convert the paths, or we need to convert the stroke to a path. And before we do that, we have to take care of the text because this text right now is dependent on this circle to keep it shape. And this text here is dependent on the inner circle to keep it shape. So we need to convert this text to a path so we can modify this path and not have the text affected. So with this top text selected, I will just use control shift C, which is the same as going to the path menu and going object to path. So now you can see that it gives you uh, sort of the outline of it, which show, indicates that it's a path. And if you look down in the status, it says group of five objects. So one thing that Inkscape does is anytime you take a text object and convert it to a path, it leaves all of the characters grouped so that you can move them around together as a unit, see, just like that. And I'll just control Z that. But we can't perform Boolean operations on grouped objects, so we need to ungroup this. So I'm going to use Control Shift G on the keyboard to ungroup it. So now if you look down in the status bar, it says five objects selected of type path. And that's pretty much what we want. Um, at this point in time, I like to union this together because this text is how we want it. We don't want to accidentally nudge uh, one of the characters out of the way or something. So I'm going to uh, use Control Plus on the keyboard to union that. So now this is all one grouped, uh, uh, sort of unified path. And I could have done that by going to path uh, and union. I just used the keyboard shortcut there. So let's do the same thing here with this text. So Control Shift C, object to path, uh, Control Shift G to ungroup, Control Plus to union that. And with the M, Control Shift C. Now it might 
You might think that because it's just one character, you don't need to do that ungroup thing, but it actually is a group of one object, which is gonna prevent he or cause headaches for us in the future if we try to perform Boolean operations on it. So I'm gonna control shift G to ungroup that. And I don't need to union this one because there's nothing to union it to. And now, <clears throat> so at this point in time, I can go and I can take this path, the inner circle or the outer one, and I can convert that stroke to a path. So I can use control alt C on the keyboard to convert that stroke to a, a path. Um, alternatively, you could go up to the path menu and go stroke to path. You can see there's a keyboard shortcut right there. They do the same thing. So now I have everything as paths here. What I can do now is I can go ahead and just simply group everything or uh, sorry, union everything. So I will just draw a bounding box around everything, control plus, and it looks a little funny in this view. So I hit control five to go back to, uh, to toggle the view mode. So back to normal. And there we have it. We have this one object, which is uh, one path. So you could go and you could change the color on it, things like that. You can apply a stroke to the whole thing if you chose to. Um, and now this should be ready to export to your, or to save out as an SVG and import into your CAM program and create your tool pass so you can use your plasma cutter to cut away and make a really cool sign. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching.